Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning? Do you know we dance in this church? Do you know we like we dance, correct dance? Eh? Whether you are wearing cordless, we dance, correct dance. Hallelujah. So when you want to dance, don't, don't look and say, it's like the other person is not dancing. Maybe they are not dancing. Let me package. No, we dance. Praise the Lord. So whenever you, you, you want to dance, dance. Okay? Dance and dance well. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Welcome to the month of June. Praise the Lord. The Lord has been so good. The Lord has been so, so, so good. Praise the Lord. And this month, we will be, from last month, we started with um, developing, uh, pursuing personal development. And this month, we are in going for the pursuit of excellence. Praise the Lord. The pursuit of excellence. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you because you are good. You are good. We've come again, Lord, to listen to you. Speak to us. Speak to our hearts. Lord, help us to receive the words you'll be speaking to us today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I yield completely to you today. That you think through my mind and you speak through my lips. And that the heart of your people here will be blessed tremendously. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in church? Okay. You know, I, I started this way in the first service that Pastor sent something in the group, so I want to retreat on that because really I want it to get into our hearts. Praise the Lord. It says, when others are saying there's a casting down and you are able to say there is a lifting up, you would have released the power of God to actually put you in a place of lifting up. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? Maybe I should read it to you in case you didn't see it, but I'm sure you saw it, but let me read it. I hope I can find it. Okay. When people around you are saying there's a casting down, boldly declare there is a lifting up for you, and you will release the lifting up in your life. Praise the Lord. So when they are saying, ah, this government is Shege Pro Max, you'll be saying what? It's not for me. There is a lifting up for me. Praise the Lord. When they are saying, we don't know where we go, me, I know where I'm going. That should be your confession. Praise the Lord. When things are hard, you are saying, it doesn't concern me. My economy is not from this world. Hallelujah. So say it to yourself, my economy is not from this government. Someone just said, but now the government, they pay me salary. <laughs> Your economy is not from this government. Praise the Lord. What if they don't pay you? Wouldn't you eat? Wouldn't you clothe? Do you think the Lord will not provide for you? Do you think the Lord will not satisfy you? Your economy is not from here. Praise God. Pastor Banky will say, even if four becomes 1,000, we're going to see the do what? We're going to buy them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And Pastor has said, let this be as our confession. Okay? When words are going on around you, when negative words are going on around you, don't join the bandwagon. Okay? Don't join the train of the people who will be prophesying negativity all around them and in their lives. But be in the flight of people that will be saying, indeed, there's a lifting up for me. I don't care what is going on around me. Yes, it may seem like things are, you know, are, going, are going haywire, but I know that all things, all things are working together for my good. Let that be what you say. Praise God. Your words are powerful. Be very conscious of what you say. Don't say we are just gisting. In that your gist, better be gisting positive gist. 
in that your jokes, let it be positive confessions you are making. Praise God. Because they that fear the Lord often spoke one to another. And what happens? The Lord, he hears. So don't say we are just chatting, no, because of the, no, no, no. That's your chat. Let the heart of it be, I am who the Lord says I am. There is a lifting up for me. Praise God. So today, our topic is excellence, going the extra mile. Excellence, going the extra mile. Praise God. Tell somebody, pursue excellence. Tell another person, pursue excellence. Praise the Lord. You know, the, the, the meaning of excellence is from dictionary is the quality of being outstanding. Standing out. Being extremely or exceptionally good about something or with something. Praise God. So when you, are, when you say you are pursuing excellence, it is that you are trying, you are working hard to be exceptionally good at the things you do. Do you understand me? Is that you are working hard to be exceptionally good, outstandingly good at the things your hand has found to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to say this. I wrote it down. That the quality of your life is determined by your commitment to excellence. The quality of your life is determined by your commitment to excellence. I will explain that. Now, you can be anything you want to be, but what sets you apart is excellence. Praise the Lord. You can be doing anything. You can be doing what A is doing. A and B, Mr. A and B can be doing the same thing. But what's, what sets them apart is the ability of A or B to be extremely good at what they are both doing. And that is what determines the quality of their lives because they will not be achieving the same results, right? Two men in business doing the same business, but A is constantly pursuing growth Trying hard, getting ideas, how do I better my business? And B is just comfortable with the level he is in. Which of them will have better quality of life? A will. One is, you will be in a better place to, to affect more persons, influence more people. Your business will experience growth and you will have more people. You will have the ability to get more hands in the business. But B will just stay where he is. Thank God I am making this much. Praise the Lord. So the quality of your life is determined by your commitment to being excellent. Hallelujah. And I say that, I'm saying that attaining a level of excellence takes conscious effort. Praise God. It takes effort. It takes effort. Excellence is doing uncommon things, or rather common things, uncommonly well. Excellence is doing things that seem common, but you are doing them uncommonly well. You know, there's this guy that, I don't know where he got that idea. He answers Akara boy. What he is selling is Akara. Now, he's in Port Harcourt. There's a, an old woman, I don't know if the woman has been doing the Akara, but he now came and he decided to join her in the business. I don't know how it is, but she's the one that fries the akara. She now fries too, but he, she's the basic akara fryer. He answers akara boy, NG. He, that is his name, the name he gave to himself. Now, when you come to patronize them, they will ask you, do you want akara chicken? Do you want akara turkey? Do you want akara vegetables? Do you want Akara this? The Akara that you... It's a normal Akara. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, I agree with you. Normal Akara, the one you are sure of. <laughs> I have a friend that said, please, this thing they add vegetable in Okba is annoying me. Ah, just give me Okba. Let me know I'm eating Okba. You add... Don't add anything. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. But now, this is him looking for, yes, I see something in this Akara. How do I stand out in the Akara business? And he began to think, okay, what if I add chicken? Will people buy? People like Akara and they like chicken. What if I'm able to combine the two? And then he began to advertise it. And people actually come and buy Akara. Wow, it's nice, Akara chicken. Next time they come and say, Akara chicken. But it was birthed by somebody actually sitting down to want to do something uncommon from something very common. Praise the Lord. Something very, very common. So I like to say, it's not about what you do. It's not about whether it is small. It's not about whether it's big. It's that the, I have the mindset of standing out. Praise the Lord. I have a mindset. I am standing out. In my field, I am not hidden. Praise God. In my field, at least, I am doing exceptionally well. Even if people do not know you yet, the fact that you are driven by the desire to make a difference will keep you looking for ways to stand out. Praise God. You know, they will say, you will see, Mama put here cooking rice. Mama put here cooking rice. They will line up here and be buying rice. This one will not sell until this one finishes selling. What's the difference? And this person will not say, okay, let me go and sit down. And, you know, how, what will I do to increase, improve on my cooking and improve on my service or in my service? He'll be there jealous in the other one. He's witches. He's wizard. Praise the Lord. Many of the things we go through is not witches yet. Let's do our part. There are, there's a level of excellence you will, you, you will attain. People will be running to you. You know, excellent packaging sells faster. Right? Except maybe you are selling Gary. <laughs> they still package Gary. But you know, it's something everybody package it or not. We'll be buying Gary. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the truth is, if you are doing something you have passion, things that you are in your head. You know, this is what God has called me to do. This is what I am doing. You have to make it different. You will not hide your talent under tons of people who have the same talent. Praise God. You will not even be, the worst still, being bad. Like, I'm a public speaker, like I use um, as an example in the first service. I'm a public speaker, and I'm not doing anything. All I need is that I love to speak. Give me mic. I have something to say. Then they give you mic, and nobody can say this is what you said. At the end of it all, who will give you mic again? Do you understand? But when you are able to communicate properly, you are you are able to say things in words. At least people can hear you. They can comprehend what they are, what you are saying. Yeah. Next, next time they will say, well, yes, he's upcoming, but he's trying. So but what should I do is to start putting in the work. Go and learn communication skills. Go and learn things that will make me stand out. When they say, these people, this person, this person, they are all public speakers. What can, what can make you choose me? Praise God. What can make you choose me? over the other person. That is what I should be thinking. What should set me apart? So it, whatever you are doing, what sets you apart? What makes you outstanding in the things you do? And I know, especially in the things of God, we do, most people don't even realize that God is just looking, standing around, behind, you know, just with us, looking at the things we do. So if you are not putting in the effort that is required to stand out, people overtaking is allowed. Somebody will come and overtake you. Praise God. Overtaking is what? There are so many businesses now that, that the, 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 people came up and overtook them. Amen. I, read, I wrote something down that I got from David D. Biyomi, Bishop, Pastor, Pastor David D. Excellence is being truly best at something 
outstandingly successful, it, surpassing, it is surpassing others in some good qualities. Excellence is delivering first class quality in everything you do. Did you get that? Delivering first class service or quality in everything you do. Praise God. That said, I like to say that, you know, I'm, I'm for humble beginnings. So I love to say, even when you are starting small, there is a level of excellence that is expected of you, from you. Don't say we are just beginning. We are just starting. So let's just be, anyhow, sit down and plan it. How do I deliver excellence even with the small that I have? Maybe you are um, a launderer, that's someone that washes clothes. You don't have all the equipment yet. But how can we stand out? Knowing that we have, we're in a place, we're in a community filled with people doing the same business. How do we offer excellent delivery? What can stand us out? So that at least when you come, you wouldn't want to try another person. Do you understand what I'm saying? When one person comes, the one person the Lord brings, the person will not want to go out and be looking, still be looking for another person that will start because you did not deliver excellent service. Amen. Look for the things that will make you stand out and pursue it. Don't be comfortable in your comfortable zone. Don't be comfortable in your comfort zone. Praise God. Comfort zone is not a good place to be. As long as you have a dream, as long as there is, you have a place you want to attain, you have a place you want to be. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's read Bible. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Second Peter chapter 1, 3 to 11. Okay. There's this signal that usually covers this place. Can it be removed? Okay. Praise the Lord. So I'll read. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. His divine power has given to you all things that you need for life and godliness. You know that you have the, Christ, the life of Christ working in you, right? The life of Christ is a life of excellence. Is there anything Jesus did that you can call, you can see mediocrity in? Is there anything God made that is substandard? I'm asking, is there anything? Everything, he said he looked at the things he made and he said, they are good. He was impressed by the things he made. They are good. So are you impressed by the quality you are currently dishing? And is that the highest level of, of quality you can actually give out? Praise the Lord. Praise God. So if you take a good look at the person sitting close to you, you will see that the Lord thought about it very well before he made us. Amen. Look at a mango fruit. See how it is shaped. If you see a very ripe or pure mango, you will know that Jesus is Lord. So beautiful. The yellow color will be calling you. Come and eat me. Come and eat me. Praise God. Is the excellence and the wisdom of God. Praise God. If you had just one leg, you know how you, you, you won't be able to walk. But he knew that for you to be perfect, for you to be good, you need two legs. So you can bounce if you're a guy. So you can catwalk very well if you're a lady. You can walk gorgeously, complete. Praise God. In you is all things that pertain to life and godliness. The life of Christ is in you. So God is not asking you for excellence if he is not an excellent God. Praise the Lord. Like I said before, even his name is an excellent name. Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name. 
in all the earth. So he is a hallmark of excellence. Praise God. So let's continue to read. Through these, he has given us the very and precious, the very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Five. For this reason, make every effort. Say to somebody, make every effort. Turn to another person. Say, make every effort. Make every effort to add to this faith that you now have being in Christ Jesus. Goodness. Praise the Lord. You already have faith. You are in Christ Jesus. You have a measure of faith from the Lord. Now add what? Goodness. Oh Lord, I've added goodness. Great. Add knowledge. Praise the Lord. Add knowledge. And I want to say, it's not random knowledge. Add knowledge. Relevant knowledge. Relevant knowledge. Remember, we are discussing pursuit of excellence. So add relevant knowledge as it concerns the things the Lord has called you to do. As it concerns the things you are currently doing. Learn the things that are around you. Things that will push you forward in the things the Lord has called you to do. In the Cornerstone Church, we are called to set our world on the right path, right? And we cannot do that if we are offering, we are substandard. If we are not striving to be excellent. Praise God. So add to your goodness knowledge. Learn things. Study the word of God. Study things around you. Read things, relevant knowledge to what you are doing. Acquire information. Acquire knowledge. Praise God. That is what will set you apart. That is what will differentiate you from another person doing the same thing. Amen. Praise God. Whatever you do, strive to, to deliver excellent service. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Amen. So let's go ahead. Not self, to knowledge, add self-control. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, mutual affection, to mutual affection, love. Praise the Lord. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are growing in these things, Growing in knowledge, growing in godliness, growing in patience, perseverance, growing in, in love, it will keep you from being unproductive. It will keep you from being ineffective. Have the mindset of growing in increasing measure. Have the mindset of adding to where you are, to what you know, to the things you do. Increase in knowledge, increase in capacity, increase in yourself. Build yourself up. Improve yourself. Praise God. Just have in mind that I'm not going to remain here. This place is not bad, but I'm not going to remain here. It's not bad, but the Lord has not called me to be stagnant. He has not called me to a place of stagnancy. So I have to move forward. But I tell you, even if the Lord, our Lord has called you to be up there and you don't strive to stand out, you don't strive to be excellent in the things you currently do, you will never get to that point. You will never grow. You will never get to the place the Lord wants you to be. You will just maintain the level you are in. So the Lord is telling you this morning, go the extra mile. Do something different. Add to what you are currently doing. Praise God. Okay, verse 9. But whoever does not do, have them is nearsighted and is blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So if you don't grow in these things, you will be short-sighted, you will be nearsighted, you won't see far. Amen. You won't see far. You can only see what you are doing, how you are doing it, the places you are covering at the moment. 
But when it's a mindset, you have I have to be this way. I have to be excellent. I have to be outstanding in everything I'm doing. Then you, you will even be releasing the power of God to give you ideas. You'll be releasing the power of God to think, okay, how do I, how do I take it a step further? How do I go an extra mile? Praise God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5. 14 to 16. Are we there? Okay. Let's read that together. Verse 14. You are the light of the world. Cannot be hidden. Next verse. On the boil. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. 16. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. So if we are the light of the world, it means that you are, you, are not, you are not drowning in the darkness that is in the world. You are shining forth. You are called to shine forth the light of Christ. Praise the Lord. You are the light of the world. See, we are saying no to mediocrity in Christianity. We are saying no longer will we be tolerated. No longer will we be managed. Uh, you are offering a... a, a a product you know that is not of standard and yes, you know, is, is the government, is, is the policy. No longer will we be, be like that. Praise God. Whatever we are dishing out has to be standard, has to be high quality. You know, I know before that, I, I've heard it that before when people want to hire, say, accountants or good people that want to hire quality positions, they, they go to churches and they find Christians. Okay, pastor will say, this brother is, take this brother, he can. But now you hear people say, and it, if it's church people, I don't even want, even church, we in the church say it. We in the church say, I don't want any, uh, church people, ah, no, no, no. They, are, they have plenty of work. We say it, don't we? If somebody just say, I'm a pastor, you start, you just, the person just say, you just, you just increase your, your, your security. Praise God. But that is not how it should be. It should be that when, as a child of God, this is what, if I tell you this is white, take it anywhere, it is white. If I say this is brown, take it anywhere, it is brown. You are the light of the world. You are not given to mediocrity. You are given to a life of excellence. Praise the Lord. Do you know who you are? A city set upon a hill can never be hidden. God says that you are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. If you are his masterpiece, you cannot create, you cannot recreate substandard things. You cannot dish out lifestyle that is substandard to the life of Jesus in you. You have the life of Christ in you that is able to create. You are his masterpiece. Masterpiece. Praise God. That is who the Lord called you, the apple of his eyes. You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, a holy people, a set apart people. So we cannot be saying manage it now, manage it, manage me like that, manage me. Hello? We cannot be saying manage me anymore. We cannot be saying manage it like that. You're, are, you not in this, are you not in this country? If there is anybody doing anything exceptional, it should be a child of God. If there is anybody delivering excellent service, it should be a child of God. It should be us in the kingdom. Amen. Because our source and our sustainer is excellent. 
So all we are receiving from him is excellence. So all we, are, we should be able to give out is excellence. Praise God. Go the extra mile. Take the next step. Do it better. You can package that product and that will be what we... I have one product that when people see the design, what brings people to the product is the design. People that do they just like, ah, this, this design is fine. Put extra effort to make it beautiful. Put extra effort to make it look better. Put extra effort to deliver better service. <clears throat> do you know that the average age in Nigeria now is 17 years? The average age in Nigeria at the moment is 17 years. What does it tell you? To actually reach out to these young people, to actually talk to them the way they understand what you are saying, is results. Is results. It's no longer we are, we are aged, we are at, is that they are, they are, the populace is more now of young people. And if we're going to actually reach them, we had better be outstanding. We had better be sure what we are doing. Praise God. So your child, think about it. Your child can probably even handle your phone better than you do. Is the way it is right now. So for us to be able to communicate this life of Christ, communicate discipline, communicate self-control. It's not just words. It's not just blabbing. It's that they are seeing what you are doing. They are seeing your life. They are seeing you producing results. They are seeing you living a life of excellence. Seeing, they, they'll just be like, I want to be like you. At least when you are talking, they know you are not just rapping. You are talking something they can see, they can relate to. Praise God. It's no longer a time you say, I'm an elder, come, let me talk to you. The person comes and sits down and be listening to everything you're saying. And then, okay, daddy. They will ask you questions that will make you say, just be going, we are finished talking, just go. Praise God. So we need to strive to stand out, whatever we are doing. As a leader, you have, you have, you, you need, it needs to be a drive, a desire. I have to be an excellent leader. Praise God. You won't be expecting your staff to do the things you're not doing. You come very late to work and you are shouting, why are you late? They are learning from you. Amen. Your client or customers arrive. You're not even there yet. And it's not like you, are doing, you went for another business or something very important held you that I'm the CEO. So I can come when I, I'm comfortable. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Hone your skills. Whatever the Lord has put in your hands to do, hone it. I can sing a song now, and a keyboardist, or this our keyboardist will play it, and then another keyboardist comes and plays it. And I say, and you, you will hear it, you will listen to it. There is always a difference. Praise God. So if you are an instrumentalist, do not be comfortable where you are. Strive to hone that skill. Strive when we want to call keyboardists or bassists in Enugu. They say there's one guy that in Cornerstone Church. Hey, if the guy had do this, do you understand? Because all of us that came, we, we came to church today. When we listen to maybe me sing or listen to somebody play the, instrument, play the instrumentalist, you can go out there and talk about it. Talk about that. Let me give you this testimony. There's someone that I invited to church, and she didn't come that I invited her, but she said she would come prophetic service, so she came. When she was going, uh, she was so cold. I was asking her, what happened? Did something happen? Didn't you enjoy the service? I said, that is fine. She's fine. She's fine. Then at a later day, we're now, we're now talking. In fact, we are with people. She was now saying, Hey, she was telling people that she went to my church. Hey, that it went for anointing, wanted to push her down. That she had to sit down and hold herself. 
That I was, that's what she was now telling me that I was asking her why she was cold. That the spirit of God really touched her. Now, she's the one that is not telling every other person there that she came to church. Nobody would have known. And she's also the one sharing her experience. I said that to say, you don't even know who comes here. And you don't know where they are taking it to. Right? So that is why in everything we do, even in our services, we try to deliver excellence. Praise the Lord. Because as you are in church today, you are blessed. You go, man, the word of God that was preached last Sunday. You, you needed to be there. You now begin to teach the person what was taught. I may not be there. Pastor Murphy will not be there. Right? But you are there now evangelizing. Why? You were blessed by the word of God that came to your heart. It's the same way when you are offering a service in church. It can be that you, the way you smiled at somebody and say, welcome to church. And the person said, somebody said to me yesterday, nobody has hugged me today. And in my mind, I just hugged him because someone I liked, you know. And he said, nobody has hugged me today. That thing, you get this, how it touched me. Praise God. <laughs> it's something very trivial. It doesn't, but it's not that kind of hug. Ah, who are you doing? Like? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the point is, whatever you do, you know, just like that, you don't know what, what, the little things you do matter a lot to people. Amen. Somebody will not come to buy something from you, and you are so, maybe you have been standing from morning and in the evening, your, your head is already standing up. Please, you have been pricing, buy, if you don't want to buy, go. Another person is standing by the side, I'm like, hey, this woman a trouble woman. And Lily, <laughs> on to the next person. You have already chased not one customer. All the people that are around heard you. Praise the Lord. So what we are saying is strive for excellence. It's not that it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You have to, it's a work to be done. You have to think about it thoroughly. The, what, the kind of service you want to give. The kind of lifestyle you want to give out. Praise God. You know, even the Bible says in the Matthew we just read, but verse 41, verse 42, sorry, it said, when you are ordered to go a mile, you should do what? Go another mile. It's another. It's not like going the mile is easy. When you are trekking one mile, you know, it's not, it's not beans and rice. Then he said, go another mile. It's not going to be easy. It's something you do painstakingly. You, you make up your mind. I am going to get here, whatever it takes me. Jesus, on his way to the cross, he knows where he's heading to, where the cross will be, will be, will be, will be where he'll be hanging on the cross. But there's a journey to be made. That journey, the road to that place, was not funny. But he knows that if he gives up on the road, now who give up, do it. Now who give up, do it. Now you lose. So you know give up. You know go give up. Jesus pain carrying that cross. Oh, even being flogged. Being in pain. He was walking. He was carrying it. He was moving. Why? So that today you and I can come today and sit down and lift our holy hands and say, Abba, Father. Praise God. Don't give up on that business. Don't give up on the call of God upon your life. Don't give up on that ministry. Don't give up on that which the Lord has called you to do. Don't give up on being an excellent mother. Praise God. Don't say these children, ah, I don't tire. If you don't, offer, if you don't give that child that excellent motherhood in the long run, it's still coming back to you. If you don't give that child excellent fatherhood in the long run, my father has never been in my life. Praise the Lord. So we are striving. It's something we are doing. We are going to stay up at night. We are going to have to learn. We are going to have to get information. We are going to spend money. But what are we doing? We are going the extra mile because we know, we, are, we know where we are going to. Amen. Roban stores did not start having Roban stores all over the place. They started with a store. You know where they started in Enugu? All sent here. Very, not as big as what they have. I think, there, is it, was it on rentage? But the place was almost like, I don't know, but I think it's on rentage. 
But go to Roban stores now. Is it one place? When they were there, do you not think that they had in mind, men, we're going to increase, we're going to expand? They were thinking it. They were planning it. They were pursuing it. Was it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. But it needs to be done. It's got to be done. Praise God. But if you're comfortable where you are, your mind will just shut down. We are, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We are doing well, hallelujah. But when you're not comfortable there, you know that, man, God has called me to do better. Then your brain is up. What can we do better? Your spiritual antenna, they are all up, trying to catch instructions from the Lord. Where can we go from here? Praise God. I want to read a scripture to you because um, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I want to read, um, read Amplified Contemporary, Luke 10, 19. I want to establish that what things we blame the devil for is not necessarily that he's the devil. Amen. There are things we say, ah, I lost that job. It's the devil. And they picked your CV and they couldn't make out anything out of it. And they like, they threw it away. Amen. There are things that is not, it's not the devil. Is that we gave him authority to now do things in our life. You know the devil doesn't have authority over you, right? Do you know that? The devil doesn't have any single authority over you. Whatever authority he wields, we gave it to him. So let me read that scripture. Do we have it? Luke 10, 19, AMPC. Let me read it here from here. It says, Behold, I have given you authority and power. Jesus speaking. Behold, I have given you, seated here, authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability. It says, over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. I don't want you to miss something. I want you to pay attention. To you has been given authority and power. You know they say devil no get power. Anybody that says devil doesn't have power, show him this scripture. It says, and the power that the enemy possesses. Did you see that? The, the power the enemy possesses. But did you see anywhere it says the authority the enemy possesses? We are the ones that give the devil a foothold in our lives. That is why when the Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the, your, your, the sun go down on your anger. It now says what? Do not give room. Do not give a foothold to the devil in your life. So when you are angry, when you disobey that scripture, you have given the enemy a foothold in your life. You have given him an authority to rule over you. Praise God. You know, for instance, a police officer or police officers, they have power to stop you on the road, right? They have power to stop you by the checkpoints and check your car, maybe to talk to you. They have the power to stop you. Is that so? Is that so? But do they have authority over your money? The money in your pockets, do they have authority over your money? They don't, right? Now, but when you come to that checkpoint and... You know you don't have paper. You don't have your papers. Maybe you've not even renewed or they, you don't just have it. What will you now do? You willingly hand over your money. The authority you have over your money, you willingly give it to them so that they will do what? They will not carry you to the station. Officer. Officer, well done, sir. <laughs> Praise God. But when you know that all is, you, you, get, you go on your side proper, all correct. You say, pack, pack, officer, well done, sir. The officer, they did, they're different. Officer, how are you? How are you? Are you, are you are they doing that? How are you? Officer, no, any, nothing for us. There will not be the one begging you anything for us. Officer, another time. You'll be doing waiting. Oh, yeah, be, hallelujah. They see you, they know that you are all correct. But when you're not all correct, they know to even now you go begin to hail them from afar. Hey, officer, hey. They'll say this one, oh no, correct. Park one side. 
Praise the Lord. So whatever the, the, the authority the devil has over us, we gave it to him. Maybe by negligence, maybe by sheer ignorance, maybe lack of knowledge, we don't know. Or maybe we are passive about the knowledge we have. We are passive about even utilizing the, 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 the knowledge we have. So because we are not using it, because we don't know, devil becomes, ah, can't they play ten ten with us? Praise God. Praise the Lord. So do not say that it is the devil. Amen? I say again, do you know who you are? You are the son of God. You are God's. You are God's. A co-heir. Hey, you and Jesus now, brother. Hey. We are not going to be managed anymore. We are going to stand out. Whatever is going to take us, we are going to chase after it. Yes, I'm a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. Hello? Yes. He was a carpenter. Is this not the carpenter's son? They know him. It's not even that he is popular. Why? He was doing something good with that carpentry work. They knew him. You know when, um, when the evil spirit was on, on, on Saul? When evil spirit from God came upon Saul, his people, his servant said to him, let's look for somebody that is killed that we will call. Maybe when he comes and plays music for you, this thing will leave you. He said, fine, go and call. They said they began to look for what? Skillful people. Skillful person. Somebody that has proven to be outstanding. Not a regular player. Someone did that. Did, have you seen the... Is in um, First Samuel chapter 16 thing. First Samuel chapter 16. They began to look for a person. And prior to that, Samuel had already gone to anoint David. And then they began to look for somebody who is anointed. Then I said, they came back to the king. I said, we have found someone. We found a man. They said, this man we found is skillful. He's anointed. He has the power of God. The spirit of God is upon him. Maybe they are looking for player, just instrumentalist. Now look at the things, and they also said he is a mighty man of war. He's a man of valor. Instrumentalist. Are you hearing? Are you hearing the CV? Because he has taken the time. Or it's not that day now that he learned all of that. He has been playing it all his life. He has been learning it. He has been trying to acquire knowledge. He has been trying to acquire skill. He has been trying to increase and hone his skill. He has been going the extra mile. And they said, and so now said, go and call him. They called him. He came. He played. The king. In fact, the king saw him and just looking at him, the king fell in love with him. If you read it, he said, he is also handsome. Praise God. So, when you dress, appearance, dress excellently. Amen. Dress excellently. Cover body. Amen. Dress royalty. Prim and proper. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you have two clothes. Wash and well, iron arm. Nobody go, no. Praise God. He's, they said he looks good. He's very good looking. So, when he appeared before again, appearance first, king fell in love with him. And then he played, King saw results. Somebody say results. He saw results. Praise the Lord. So don't say, ah, my people, they're not, they not patronizing you. I thought that everybody in this church would be coming to buy from my shop. But when they come, the first time they came, how did you treat them? How did you do? Did you leave them with a wow expression? Did you leave them with a, I'm come, I, you, don't, you don't have any other choice than to come back? impact. What did you leave them with? Do you understand? That is exactly what David did. Very first impression, he delivered excellence. The king called his father and said, please leave your son in my service. I love what he's doing. I am impressed by him. Did you think if David came to the time where he has to showcase excellence, that he delivered substandard delivery, 
that Saul would have asked him to be there. First of all, they were going to gather him and put, lock him up. Because he's the king. He will be very angry. Already he has evil spirit disturbing him. And now he came to add to the demon disturbing him. They will gather you and lock you up first. Praise God. Please don't come to the point where the Lord is expecting you to have grown. Expecting you to have, you know, be able to handle people and you fail. Remember, it's not just about you. You being outstanding is not about you. Is that men will see your good works and they will do what? They will give your father in heaven glory. It's about people who are seeing you. It's about the people who you may never get to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus loves you. People who you may never open your mouth and, 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 and um, preach to. But they are looking at you. They are seeing you. They say nurses are wicked. Are you a wicked nurse? Too? Or are you an excellent nurse? They say, ah, oh. <laughs> my younger sister is a nurse. So anytime he hears that thing, he used to, he used to prick her heart. But she not tell me, sister, it's true. <laughs> because she's been in school. She worked with some of those people. And they would just, he said, anytime she just, and she'll be in a place, nobody knows she's a nurse. And the best thing would be say, nurses, they are wicked. They are. She's saying in her mind, be saying some nonsense now. Please stop cursing us. Stop cursing us. So I now told her that is your, your, your leeway to do what? Stand out. They say nurses are wicked, but you see that nurse? She's the best nurse in this hospital. Praise God. She's the best nurse in this hospital. Or are you going to just join the bar? Sister, you don't, you don't even understand. Patients that are where they are headache. Ha, patient that can make you mad. If that is going to be your case, if that's how you'll be seeing it, then you will join the group of wicked nurses. Praise God. So whatever you do, every field that you find yourself, it doesn't matter what they are labeled. It doesn't matter the tag they are carrying. What matters is that you have Christ in you. What matters is that you are the light of the world and you cannot afford to shine. You cannot afford but to shine. Remember, you can't light, you, you, you can't put on a lantern and go and cover it with a bucket. Right? You will put it up. Put it on the lampstand and everybody will say, of never. So you have to shine. Praise God. Don't say, doing this thing is hard. Package it well. Yes, you don't have the finances or the, or the money to get branded nylons. But shall get fine one. We don't get brand. They don't write anything. But let it be. Fine. So when you say, okay, you've bought, don't worry, let me package it for you. The person knows you have, you know that it should be packaged. And then you bring your red or this fancy red nylon and put it inside. The person says, thank you. You have given yourself that this is where I'm going. I've not even gotten to where I'm going, but I know where I'm going. And you're doing your best to get there. Praise the Lord. So are you going to sit where you are? Or are you going to begin to dream excellence, dream better, dream bigger? Amen. Are you going to be, you know, imagine yourself going the extra mile? See yourself doing it. Praise the Lord. It's not about you. It's about the person looking at you. It's about the person that encounters you. Amen. I want to sh share with you how, how you can at least, well, how you can begin to go the extra mile, how you can pursue excellence. First of all, the number one is having an intimate relationship with the Lord. Do not joke with your prayer life. Do not joke with your time, this, your study time, your study, your, the time you spend studying the Word of God. The Lord speaks to us. The Lord gives us instructions. The Lord directs what we do. Praise the Lord. Where you are. <laughs> Where you are, the Lord can download something and give you. Amen. There's, there's a particular village or set of people's red oil I tasted. And I was wondering, it tastes different from my, the, one I, the one I like to use, the one I get from my place. I didn't quite like it, but I, I was wondering why is it different? What makes it taste like this? You know, Kwasami Ba, 
Maybe it's something that is not really very important. But it's, it's in my heart because it's something I'm interested in. I got the answer this morning. This morning. Praying. Praise God. I just share that to tell you that you can download what's your mind. I'm not even from there like that. But I got the answer why it is like that. Just praying. It just came to me. Okay, this is it. So don't neglect the place, the place of prayer as you desire to live excellently. As you desire to lead excellently as a leader. The Lord will teach you things nobody can teach you. The Lord will teach you how to handle your staff. Maybe you have a difficult staff. The Lord can teach you how to handle that person. The Lord can open your eyes to things you never imagined. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Your mind, our mind becomes renewed in the word of God. So we, we pay serious attention spending time in the word. It's even in the word of God that you get to know God expects you to be excellent. God expects me to do more. God expects me to do better. God wants me to live like this in the word of God. Secondly, sit down and think. Praise the Lord. Sit down and think. This is my business. How we go go permanent sites? Which road we go follow? Sit down and begin to think it. Amen. Don't shut your mind. I don't have time. Sit down and think about it. Process the ideas. Process the thoughts. Then write them down, number three. Write them down. Whatever comes to you, don't neglect it. Pen it down. Note it down. Praise the Lord. Note down the measures you want to take. Note down, note down the things you want to do. Number four, research. Find people who are exceptionally doing well who are doing very well in that field, in that place, in that thing you are doing. Get people, look for people who have been known to have, you know, they have been, they know to be outstanding, they have been known to be outstanding in that field. What did they do? What are they doing? What can I learn from them? What can I pick from them? Praise God. You will learn a lot learning from people who have been there who have gotten to where you are striving to get to. You will learn a lot of things. You don't have to go through the errors they went through. You don't have to go through the mistakes they went through. Then lastly, execute. Execute. Praise God. It's in the doing. If you think about it, you have fantastic idea until you begin to execute. It's only a beautiful idea. Hallelujah. Until you start doing something, it is only what? A fantastic idea. Amen. So do what? Execute. Even the smallest part of what you thought about. Amen. Don't say it's not a big business. It's a small business. Package your akara well. Package your yam well. Package your whatever it is well. Anything it is, be it in church, let it be that I understand that this thing I'm doing, I have to deliver excellent service. I have to go the extra mile. Yes, I didn't sleep well, but I'm an usher. I have to smile. I have to really welcome people with the spirit of, of God, with the power of God, not grudgingly, right? Everybody doesn't have to see on my face that I, I, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable. I don't have money. I don't have, I don't have this. I need this. Amen. So I'll end by saying this. I learned some from Pastor Poju recently. He's very instructive. He said, spend 25 minutes three times a week learning in, the, in that phase, or rather in that thing you are doing. Spend 25 minutes Three times a week, reading, learning, researching in that line of work you do, in that ministry you are in, in that work you are doing. 25 minutes a day. Is it so much? Is it so much? 
three times a week. This is so much. But then you will learn as you read. Because the idea is that the more you keep your mind stayed on that thing, the more you keep your mind learning something, acquiring information, you don't even know it. As long as your mind is being shifted, your body around you, your circumstances, your ministry, your business, everything you are doing, they don't have option. They will just naturally begin to move in that direction where your mind is. Praise the Lord. So that is why I, I'm, passing out, I'm passing also that um, instruction to you. If, sorry about that. Sorry about that. So I'm also passing that to you. You can write it down. I want to spend like 25 minutes every day learning about this course. You're a student, right? Spend 25 minutes learning, reading it up, get information, learn, improve on yourself, improve on yourself, learn better ways to do that thing. Amen. The goal is God is an excellent God. And I have God dwelling inside of me. I have to truly represent God. Praise God. I'm a child of God. And I'm a child of God that is going to express the light of God. I'm going to shine for the light in the world because I am the light of God. So say it to yourself. I am the light of the world. Say like you believe it. I am the light of the world. I am going to shine. I'm going to shine. I'm going to be exceptional. Oh, whatever it will take me. Say it, whatever it will take me. I am going the extra mile. Whatever is going to take me. I'm, I'm taking a step further. I am increasing in knowledge. I am increasing in knowledge. I am increasing in strength. Oh, I am increasing in wisdom. I am going the extra mile. I am learning. Increasing in learning. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and speak these words to yourself. Pray for yourself this morning that you will not fall short from the life that Christ expects you to live. You will not fall short from this life of excellence. You will do common things uncommonly well. Yes, you are an accountant. You will become an accountant that is trustworthy. One with a difference. You will become that which you do. Set apart. You will become a wife that the world will look at and want to be a wife. You will become a wife that the world will look at and they will see excellence. Oh, shaka pelebrotakavalada. You will be a parent that the world will wonder how do you do this? Oh, shekeveleto dalabayada. Excellence in everything you do. Excellence in everything you lay your hands to do. Oh, shaka panda lebrotigavalateja. Zebedegatena lambrato kavaladayana. You are the light of the world. You already have the grace to shine. You already have the grace to shine. Oh, kata you only need to renew your mind to align to the will and plan of God for your life that you begin to do exceptional things you have been called to a life of excellence oh if you're following us online you can also get your elements ready and please you can begin to give out the elements it's also our communion service today. It is our communion service today. <laughs>